All right, so um, three o'clock. Um, so we'll stop. Um, okay, today I remembered that to hit the record button. Um, so let's let's first review a bit. All right. Um, we we derived last time that uh, um, this is our learning rate. I'm sorry, step size. So is the alpha um, at the kth iteration it should be. So uh, let me let me add the remark here. So um, so this is a note. I, I, I don't think I have posted this yet. Um, this P is, okay, it's right there. So the P is our negative gradient at the current step. And uh, uh, H is our Hessian matrix. Um, essentially, the, this is our uh, alpha should be. But keep this in mind, uh, evaluating this would be unrealistic. Um, so if you open up any, let's say, um, you Google on YouTube, let's say you want to learn gradient descent and every single, right now everyone is interested in machine learning, every single video will tell you, okay, you just set a small step size, which they call learning rate. Uh, and today, but today we'll derive something specific. So uh, how do we guarantee convergence? Um, so this is, this is a, uh, today, this is our goal is to uh, derive um, like a necessary condition uh, for the convergence. Um, so let's consider a, a special function. So to, to consider the convergence, To consider the convergence, let's uh, let's try to um, consider a special function, which is uh, in the homework. It is uh, uh, let's consider the following function. All right. So by now, by now, this function should be our friend that uh, we should be able to just uh, look at this function. So by the way, if we write down uh, explicitly, this is uh, the summation of i from one to n and j from one to n, uh, xi, qij, xj, subtract the summation of, let me move this a bit. So, and this is uh, i from one to n bi times xi, all right? Um, so by now, this function should be our friend now uh, because, uh, um, so we derived in the homework that it's gradient. is nothing but Q times X subtract B. And this function is quadratic. Um, this function is quadratic, which means we take second derivative, we'll get uh, all numbers. So we'll, we'll not get a function and it's Hessian. is nothing but uh, this matrix Q, okay? So we normally we assume Q is uh, um, a symmetric matrix, so that all of its eigenvalues are real. And moreover, moreover, we normally okay. So we normally, uh, what I mean by normally is not necessarily, but uh, um, 
we normally require Q is positive, but not necessary. Okay, so even though sometimes Q is negative, we may still have uh, something convergent. But normally we require it's positive, but not necessarily. Okay, um, so what we want to do is we want to analyze. So today's goal. This is today. Our goal is to uh, to investigate investigate the convergence of uh, gradient descent, like for this function. Let's say this function. We give it a name. Let's say this function is star. Um, for stuff, okay. Uh, and how this, uh, how how the convergence, uh, depends on alpha k um, and uh, q. So, by the way, let me just uh, write down our gradient descent. Um, And this is our gradient descent method. Um, so this is today's goal. Uh, we want to prove a theorem. Uh, we want to show uh, how the convergence depends on, like, how the matrix is going to play with. Okay. Um, right now, okay. Um, the first step is to write down an error equation. Okay. So let's recall that if we have a fixed point iteration, what do, uh, what we did back in like a month ago, what we did was if we have a fixed point iteration, We have this is x k plus one's iteration is a matrix uh, times the kth iteration then plus a constant vector c, all right. And what we do is we subtract the fixed point from the left and from the right at the same time. Um, so the error equation of the fixed point iteration is we subtract the fixed point, which we call x star, and uh, right, and then we have to make use of this x star being a fixed point. We can get our um, error equation, which is. This is because uh, um, this is because so this is uh, uh, because x star is a fixed point. All right. In this way, uh, in this way, we can analyze the convergence based on the spectral property of T by spectral. Property, I mean the eigenvalues of t. So we want a t to have a maximum eigenvalue less than one, so that uh, the error will contract e after each iteration, not be magnified after each iteration, because we want the error be smaller and smaller after iteration, not to be magnified by um, the t. Okay, and we do the same thing for the gradient descent. So let's do it. And uh, we subtract. So now for gradient descent, we do the same. We subtract x star. And on the right, um, we subtract x star as well. OK.
So we do wanna we do wanna acknowledge one thing. Um, if x star is our fixed point, it means it is our minimizer and the gradient. The gradient is zero. So um, so x star uh, is equal to x star subtract the gradient of x star i mean this this looks kind of a repetitive uh, but this is just a, a property of the fixed point that we want to exploit if if we write something like this we'll see that okay so we'll see uh then the right becomes the case iteration subtract x star subtract sorry this is alpha we have an extra alpha there then uh, alpha k then we have alpha k gradient of uh, uh, f of uh, xk subtract the gradient at this fixed point So this this is we uh, we plug in uh, we plug in this uh, uh, fixed point iteration. Let's say the fixed point representation of x star there. X star is our minimizer, by the way. Um, um, so let me erase here. So where x star is the uh, minimizer. I'll say local minimizer but uh um our function is quadratic the local minimizer is also the global minimizer so we don't worry about that too much but the the key is to we want to derive uh what our alpha should be like the the sufficient condition so last time we derived several necessary condition but uh, it's not sufficient so we want to have a systematic guideline to the convergence now let's use uh the following thing uh we haven't used this yet okay we want to use a gradient of f of x um is uh qx subtract b so by the way um i i think i got an email uh saying uh if we do remote and we do lecture sometimes it's too quick and we don't have time to uh write down the notes so my my take my two cents here are my two cents all right so if we do remote lectures don't take notes just uh, listen to my babbling and later on just check the uh the the note um i uploaded on canvas and see if you can uh reproduce uh those notes by yourself for example derive the error equation take the derivative etc and uh, um okay so right now we just make use of uh uh the gradient of f is explicit so right now we have this um so we have q x k uh subtract b subtract q x star subtract b b got cancelled all right so right now uh we have something very interesting now um so b got cancelled what's left is we can pull out this matrix q if we simplify we'll get uh this is alpha k times matrix q and this is xk subtract x star and we have common term common term and we can write the left as an identity matrix times so we can insert an identity matrix here um and then what happens is we have our error equation So this is our error equation. 
And uh, uh, I want to say that for every iterative method, no matter uh, if you have gradient descent, you have conjugate gradient, and you have some fancy technique from like recent 10 years development of machine learning, like momentum, IMS prop, Atom, um, something like that. Adaptive momentum uh, with like various things, but the like the basic how to derive the error equation or other thing is we subtract the fixed point and we try to write. So uh, this, if you uh, let me, where is my pen? You see, this is our T. Okay, this is our T matrix, and we want our T matrix have eigenvalue between zero to one. So that's our goal. Uh, and uh, now we just take, uh, um, we just take uh, the norm. So by norm, uh, we mean two norm. So let me, let me launch a quick poll to see if everyone is okay with uh, the error equation, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so we just take the two norm. So by the way, uh, if we don't have any subscript in the norm, it's uh, two norm. Um, now we do Cauchy Schwartz. Okay, so here is Cauchy Schwartz. Um, and then here we have this is less than I subtract identity subtract alpha k q. So now let me add this two norm here, and this is that, and we have all right. So if we look at this. The analysis, the technique uh, we would like to apply uh, to gradient descent, to analyze gradient descent is no different from, uh, let's say, uh, what we have done for the fixed point iteration. It's just a, it's a, it's a trick here because we have one more parameter to play, which is uh, uh, alpha k. Uh, the left is the error measured in uh, L2 norm at the next iteration. The right is, so this is our uh, two norm of um, our matrix T and which we can say it's an iterator matrix. And this is the error of the current iteration. So basically we want this guy uh, to be less than one. Okay. So then we recall, we recall, okay. So we recall we have proved for symmetric matrix. We, we, we know this is symmetric, okay? Symmetric means all eigenvalues are real. Um, and we have proved that uh, if it's symmetric, all eigenvalues are real, uh, the two norm of this matrix I'm not sure if uh, every one of us remember, but the two norm we have proved, this is a spectral radius, is equal to the spectral radius of uh, this matrix. Okay. Which is a maximum of the absolute value of the eigenvalue. So uh, maximum of, uh, uh, Let's say, um, let me use uh, uh, lambda of, let me denote this matrix to be T, all right? So 
it's the maximum. The spectral radius is the maximum of the absolute value of the eigenvalue um, of that. So now, um, so it's like every so why we have uh, uh, why we have done so many uh, homework problems. It seems clueless. Uh, sometimes we are kind of you know clueless of what we are doing, but every single piece of the puzzle they eventually they'll match up so uh for example uh we have shown in the uh, homework okay so I, i'm not sure uh, if you guys remember in the homework um three okay we've shown that if q uh has eigenvalue lambda then alpha k times q has eigenvalue alpha k times lambda all right uh let, let me say uh let, let's say this is i because uh, i is like one to n and this is i to one to n and if we add a shift, all right, if we add a shift, so now it's I minus alpha KQ has eigenvalue. One minus alpha K lambda I, I is that, all right? So what happens is, what happens is we actually, the T, so this matrix T here, the iterator matrix, uh, which we want to find its spectral radius, but it changes back to the problem of looking for um, the eigenvalue for uh, Q. Okay, so um, let's continue here. So this implies, um, the two norm of this matrix um, is a maximum of the absolute value of one minus alpha k lambda i and i from one to n. Okay. Um, we we can think something like the following. Um, so. Alpha k, alpha k here, uh, even though it's to be determined, but it's a fixed number. Okay, so let's move a side note here. Um, a side note here is if we consider a function g of lambda is one minus alpha lambda. Okay. Um, so let's let's draw a picture of this function. Um, uh, the inside, the inside is a linear function. Uh, so uh, let me draw it here. This is lambda. This is g of lambda. And when when lambda equals one over alpha. Uh, when lambda equals one over alpha, uh, it's zero. Or say alpha equals uh, one over lambda. So uh, this is one over alpha. And what happens is it's zero. And the rest is like we get positive. Okay. So, and if we say this is lambda minimum, if we say this is lambda maximum, okay, it's very straightforward to verify that the maximum of this number will be determined by the maximum of this and that. So we only consider the endpoint. It's pretty much. It's pretty much agree with um, our observation for the line for a linear function 
uh, we consider the maximum of a linear function. Okay, think about it. Um, the maximum of a linear function is either achieved on the left end point or the right end point. Okay, um, on a specific interval. This is the same. So let me let me add here. So by this argument, the maximum. Even though we have here, we have like a n candidates to take maximum, but the real, uh, what real matters um, is just the endpoints, which is uh, the maximum of just two numbers. The first one is one minus alpha k times lambda minimum. Uh, by lambda minimum, we mean the lambda minimum of the matrix Q. And one minus absolute value of one minus alpha k lambda maximum of this matrix Q. So now let's define this number. Um, let's define this number to be. Uh, rho alpha k. If if we want uh, uh, our algorithm, uh, which is right here, the area equation, which is right here, uh, if we want our, our algorithm conversion, we want this guy to be strictly less than one. Um, so we have. Uh, so what we want. is rho alpha k uh, between zero to one uh, for each k. Okay. Um, so this is our goal. So let me do a quick poll um, to see if uh, um, everyone is okay with uh, the goal we want. All right. Um, okay, so um, there are still some students who are kind of unclear. So let me clear the logic again. Um, this is the error equation for the gradient descent. We use cauchy schwarz inequality. Um, we have this is the error in next iteration, error in previous iteration. If we want a convergence, we want a contraction. This number has to be less than one, between zero and one, and then we use what we have. Uh, um, I forgot in which lectures, but uh, let me just add a, a placeholder here so I'll look for the lecture number. Um, so we learned in previous lecture if this is symmetric, this one is a spectral radius. And then we can find actually this is nothing but the maximum of this function. And further using this uh, diagram, we see that the maximum is achieved among either the lambda minimum of Q or the lambda maximum of Q. And uh, we define this number to be rho alpha K. And so uh, now let's solve for alpha K such that this number is between uh, Zero to one. Okay. Um, so let's draw a function. Um, so this is an absolute value function. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me let me define rho. Okay. So let me define rho alpha k like this. Um, so define. Um, rho alpha k equals uh, one minus alpha k lambda. Okay. Um, it actually has two variables, but we want to see uh, how our alpha k. So let me let me remove this subscript. So. Um, so we want to see, like, how do we choose? Keep this in mind. Um, so lambda, so these lambdas 
are fixed uh, because Q is fixed. All right. The only freedom we have, the only freedom we have is to choose alpha K, um, is to choose alpha K so that this uh, number is between zero to one. And now again, let's, let's now uh, draw some picture. So this is alpha. This is row of alpha. Um, first of all, um, it's it's so uh, let's say if we have uh, one over lambda minimum is here, and one over uh, lambda maximum is here, um, and let's draw. What happens is uh, we want to investigate. So let's first draw. one minus alpha times lambda maximum of Q, okay? So this function is apparently, uh, this function is apparently zero here. And uh, um, so when we take alpha being zero, we get one, okay? So this is one. And then, um, it has something like that. And we don't, okay, let me uh, say, and we don't want this line to go beyond this one. And we have another line that is uh, uh, one minus alpha times lambda minimum of Q. And this, So this function is zero right here when alpha is lambda one over lambda minimum. Um, so, and again, uh, this function when alpha is zero, it's one. So it, it still starts at the same point here, but uh, it kind of goes this way. By the way, um, the slope, the absolute value of the slope uh, should be the same between this and this. So the absolute value of the slope are equal. And same thing happens here. The, the slope, absolute value of the slope and the absolute value of the slope uh, are the same here. It's uh, So the slope of this is one over, uh, it's basically one over lambda maximum. This is a slope. And the slope of this is the same as, uh, uh, sorry, the slope is uh, lambda maximum and the slope of here is lambda minimum. So, and let's try to determine uh, like uh, um, the best alpha K we can choose. So we want to row alpha to be as small as possible, right? Okay. So let's say if we choose our alpha to be here, then the maximum will be this i don't know so let's uh let me let me let me use our, the yellow line to determine the maximum so if our alpha is here uh whichever line is above okay will be our maximum so we take the maximum between these two lines so uh, if our alpha is here, then we draw the line above. So this line is sitting above. So it's, so the maximum is for this line is here. Okay. And after we cross this point, okay. After we cross this point, uh, so if we take our alpha, and we take the max between these two, we'll see that the maximum become this line, okay? So right here, the maximum is right here. But we can't, we cannot let uh, our maximum, our maximum to be, let's say, we cannot, 
So we cannot choose this part because uh, we don't want our maximum to be greater than one. We want our maximum to be only to be only like uh, uh, from uh, like uh, uh, from zero to one. Okay. So we we cannot go further right. It's because I actually I haven't draw this uh, line in full. This line is like. Uh, so this line is like way over, you know? So if we choose lambda bigger, if we choose lambda bigger, we have no chance whatsoever of convergence because the maximum value will be way beyond one. So I, I kind of, I didn't draw this line, but this line uh, is not good, okay? So the only possible range for alpha is, uh, the orange line right here and by the way um the orange line has both hollow dot on the end which means we cannot either choose so alpha apparently cannot be zero so if we choose alpha to be zero i mean we're just at, after each iteration we're uh, standing still at the same point from the previous iterations okay so now if we look at the figure this is our alpha star. So it's where this row alpha is the smallest, which means this alpha, um, so uh, row alpha star is uh, the smallest possible. So uh, the smallest possible um this i subtract alpha k q this two norm so if it's the smallest possible it's it's uh when the gradient decent algorithm converges fastest i.e um gradient decent converges fastest using this uh alpha star okay i mean to determine this alpha star we have to solve an algebraic equation if we if we want to solve this algebraic equation uh what we have so um this line is uh, uh one minus alpha uh lambda minimum of q and this line is uh, uh, one minus alpha uh, lambda max of Q, but absolute value, okay? So now to get alpha star, we have to solve the following thing, which is, and on this branch, okay? On this branch, uh, the input of the absolute value is still greater than zero, okay? So we let alpha to be bigger because uh, uh, lambda max, we assume lambda max is greater than zero. So we let alpha to be bigger, then what's inside will be smaller. So initially it's decreasing. And then the input after alpha is greater than this one over lambda uh, max over, I'm sorry. Once alpha is greater than this number, the input will be negative. So what happens is, we want to solve for one minus alpha, uh, let me still use alpha, lambda maximum equals one minus alpha lambda minimum. Okay. So it's where these two lines intersect. Um, for the first line, the input is already negative. So we have to uh, negate the sign. So this implies the left is actually alpha times lambda max subtract one equals one minus alpha lambda minimum. I mean, this algebraic equation is super easy to solve. It's nothing but, uh, um, it's nothing but alpha equals so uh, basically what we have is two divided by 
lambda minimum plus lambda maximum okay so this is our alpha star let me add a little star here and uh, um so this is our alpha star uh, but alpha like this is this is uh, our optimum let's say step size but however how about the rate of convergence uh, so how about the rate of convergence So how about the rate of convergence is we just plug this optimal number back to get the row. Um, let's recall what this row is. Um, the row alpha. We, we just plug in this number to uh, either to either this or this. So let's plug in this because this is positive. This is nothing but a alpha star times lambda min so this is one uh minus um alpha star which is uh uh two times lambda min lambda min plus lambda max um so if we use common denominator, we find, so let me put lambda max in, in front of lambda min. Uh, one is nothing but uh, uh, lambda min plus lambda max divided by lambda min plus lambda max. So if we do this, we'll get, uh, this is nothing but lambda max subtract uh, lambda min. So this is row of alpha star. And uh, um, and this equals, so we actually, we have uh, a new quantity. We have a new quantity defined. So this is kappa, uh, let me add. So this is Greek letter kappa, okay. It's kappa minus one kappa plus one, uh, where we have a new quantity defined. So the kappa is defined by lambda maximum divided by lambda minimum. So it's a maximum eigenvalue divided by uh, the minimum eigenvalue of, um, of Q. Okay, and uh, this is called, so it has a name, it's called the condition number of Q, okay. So as we can see, as we can see, uh, Kappa, um, so first of all, the rate of convergence. So rho is the rate of convergence. We want a rho to be closer to zero. Uh, all right, uh, if we want a faster convergence. If our rho is close to one, uh, then we are in trouble, which means, okay, so, to make row of alpha star uh, closer to zero, we have to require kappa, which is a condition number closer to one. Okay. So kappa is always greater than one, greater than or equal to one. Okay. So let me. Um, 
if if kappa is very if kappa is very big, then we have a very slow convergence. So if kappa is big, then we have a slow convergence because the rate of convergence is close is closer to one than to zero. Okay, so we have a slow convergence. Um. Let, let's just uh, think about our finite difference matrix. <laughs> so, um, so example. So uh, Q equals A, where A is the uh, is the finite uh, difference. Uh, Try diagonal matrix. Okay, um, and we again we have derived what's A's eigenvalue. Um, so we know that the lambda uh, max of A. So uh, first, let me write down what's lambda of A. So lambda of A is nothing but two times one minus. Uh, Cosine of uh, um, pi times so lambda i is uh, pi times i divided by m plus one. Okay. Um, so and by the way, it's between uh, it's between uh, zero and four. So this is between uh, zero and four. Uh, the smallest one, the smallest one, so lambda min is, we, we have derived this. This is about uh, order h square, which is the same thing as saying this is one over uh, n, sorry, this is n square, okay. And the lambda max is about uh, like, uh, is four, okay, when n is large. So what this mean, sorry, this is one over n squared, my bad. So the kappa, the kappa of A is what? Is four divided by, so it's about uh, uh, four divided by n squared. So it's just order n squared, okay. Um, which means again, this says if n is bigger, the convergence is slower. So th this this actually um, coincides with the convergence analysis using Jacobi. So Jacobi somehow um, has a similar rate of convergence with uh, the gradient descent. So. Like they are all first order methods. So they all converge just linearly. And uh, um, initially, okay, so that's, there's a caveat. Um, so that's it for today. Okay, so we've shown like the convergence and uh, uh, in, in, in the notes I posted, we'll have a summarized theorem, but uh, essentially uh, this is our convergence. So this is our rate of convergence. So uh, that's it for today. So next week uh, we'll only have uh, two lectures, uh, one like uh, in person and streaming, and one uh, coding lecture. So we'll learn how to code uh, something new. Okay. So this is for today.